All the way from Chuck Robbins, he will time and time and time again reiterate that security is the number one priority at Cisco. Hey everyone, it's David Bumble coming to you from Cisco Live. Very happy that Raj is with me. Raj, welcome. Thank you, uh, David. I'm looking forward to the conversation. I've not visited the YouTube channel just yet, Don't worry. But, uh, but I've heard good things. Everyone who watches my channel, well, a large percentage of the people want to know about cybersecurity. Very interested in hacking, red teaming, but obviously, you know, that's sexy, but we have to protect companies. One of the problems is it, it just feels like we're under attack all the time and it's so complex to try and stop this stuff. And I've heard you say some good things about UX and like trying to simplify things. Yeah, in fact, I was admiring your your badge of CCIE. Part of me feels a little bit sort of like security shouldn't require a CCIE. Circa 2023, it should be fairly simple for anybody. Like you and I talk in English about what should be allowed, what shouldn't be allowed, right? It shouldn't be like the 14 page long exhibit that we get when we get insurance about all the kind of gobbledygook. That's our goal, right? Because this choice of security versus convenience, I think it's a false choice. And that's what I am really excited to build. And that's what we're building. Think of this, right? I wake up in the morning, I check my whatever your favorite thing is, Apple News, this, that, and the other. And then you get your coffee from this electric coffee maker. Then I get in a Tesla and go to the office, sit in front of a product console, and it reminds me of high school. 80s. <laughs> yes. Here we go. It's yeah. horrible. Right, so um, nobody that I've ever met said, oh, I'll take something that has bad user experience. They're just expressing what they want to do, not have to understand some arcane, how do I produce this fancy policy for security? None of that stuff. Like, how can we bring things together? That's our goal. I love that because I don't work for Cisco, so I can say things in the past, but like, um, I think it's been a criticism from a lot of people yeah. that Cisco products the UI can be really difficult. Yeah. So I'm really glad that you're saying this. And I think it's difficult for two reasons. One is it's basically the, the UI becomes a replica of the schema, which is kind of not useful in my opinion, because you want to focus on what's the outcome a customer is trying to bring up. I was talking to a partner just a little while earlier, and one of the things they were talking about digital experience management and all that kind of stuff and for me it's none of those fancy things it really was like you and i went off circa whatever it was march 2020 right pandemic happened yeah and and then people sort of would file a complaint saying i can't access this i can't access that my network is broken or this and that nobody knows what exactly was wrong so a trouble ticket gets issued what they really want to know is like maybe the wi-fi is weak Maybe I just need to move to a different location or sort of the cert has expired or something like that. Just providing that information is enough for anybody to stay productive. Instead of having to open a ticket, wait for somebody to remediate, then say your access is fixed, so on and so forth. It's terrible. Digital experience management in my book is about damping down the number of trouble tickets that are filed by people and all the frustration that comes with it. It doesn't speak how a customer thinks. So that's problem number one. Problem number two, is some of the integration that is done is just done for integration sake. Like you don't know what the use case is, what's the problem you're trying to solve. So that's the two places where we're getting that simplicity. One is common design, don't need to reinvent. So is that just security or is it other products as well? Other products as well, because I mean, when we're talking about network and security coming together, application and security coming together, why have people in swivel chairs, like do this in this console, do that in that console? like? just get to the outcome. And it takes a lot of UX work. So I know some of your community here maybe or may not be interested, but UX is a really important aspect of what we are doing in security. We judge a phone by the UX. 100%. And I, uh, I would argue that for a lot of customers, or a lot of users at least, the way they interface is the product. The UI is the product, right? And so it could be incredibly capable, but if it shows up like in a old way, people just assume like, okay, this is thing is not gonna be very good. Don't you find that also if you don't simplify it, and that there's, there's a concern with that. So first thing is if you don't simplify it, you're gonna miss things because it's just so complex. Yes. But then you can perhaps oversimplify it or if you, are you working on like trying to fix that because it's not that to Totally. What do you see happening in the future? Rans I've heard ransomware mentioned a lot of times. What kind of threats are you seeing? How is Cisco gonna help companies protect yeah, themselves? There, 
Yeah, there are two or three things that I want to call out we didn't get time to cover earlier. One is if you take a look at, I mean, for us, this is a lived reality. For others, uh, if they want to look at the Verizon DBIR report from earlier last year, ransomware, typically, there is no such thing as there is a vulnerability, you click on it and that's it, you're going to, those things don't exist anymore. So typically it takes about three different events to happen in your network for ransomware to get hold. Those are at least three bytes of the Apple that, that Cisco has, right? And so when, when you say three bytes of Apple, sorry, is like networking. So there is something that comes over email. There is something that is happening on, on the endpoint. There is something that spawns a process that communicates over the network about something. Again, I'm generalizing. This is not always the case. There is a graph which shows like vast majority of them take three clicks or three interactions. So the goal here for us is we talked about security like a blob. I break it up into at least four different discrete things. So there is the detection, which depends on telemetry, and Cisco has massive amounts of data. Security is going to become a data problem. Like with Talos collecting so like much stuff. Like Talos, but even on the endpoint, yeah. the network, we have very broadly deployed NDR. And we talk about NDR, not just syslog, but this is like really, sort of much more refined. Uh, there are, if I if I correctly remember, there are 78 fields for every flow that is coming. So we have quite a bit of sort of information gathered up. The second is protection. Third is remediation. The fourth one is recovery from that incident. So it's not security as a blob, but like what are the things we are able to do? What are the things we do for remediation? Where do we enforce the protection part? What is the remediation if we are not able to protect outright? What would we do? And then the fourth one, uh, which is incident response. Again, all these four are something that we do really, really, I feel that we do well and we can do a lot better given sort of the way we are building that entire architecture around data first principles, applying ML models, these are real issues. So for example, there are certain environments in which we cannot decrypt encrypted traffic, but I can measure entropy and I can have signatures of the various kinds of entropy, believe it or not, as much of an oxymoron it sounds, but we can develop, we have developed sort of uh, quote unquote fingerprint, not literally, but uh, like a measure of entropy, by which we can say, this seems like it's an odd kind of encryption that is happening and not something that we see with this kind of interaction. It is going to potentially a malicious website. We don't know for sure, but it is potentially going to a malicious website. At that point in time, we can redirect, unbeknown to the user, we can redirect that exact session through a remote browser isolation session. So we are keeping the user productive, but at the same time, we're keeping them safe. So when it goes through RBI, we're flattening out the DCOM. So any active content is already taken care of because we're running a browser, a headless browser in the cloud that is rendering everything. So there is no theoretical way that malware can come onto the endpoint. So it's measures like these by which we can use sort of ML model understanding to then take them into a compensating control, which is RBI, so that users are productive and safe. And that's the key here, right? So it's not like we can either keep you productive, we can give you access to whatever, or we can keep you safe. That's like a false choice. That's the name of the game. That nuance becomes really important. I've been working with Cisco Technologies for a long time, and I see these trends. Like there was a, a few years ago, automation was a big thing that came through. And it feels like in the last few years, um, security has come to the forefront again. Security at Cisco, uh, from a business perspective, maybe most of your audience have read Jeffrey Moore's Crossing the Chasm book. Uh, very, very popular, at least in the Valley. Everybody sort of who starts a company or runs in a, works yeah, you, in a startup you, you company. You started a company, you're right? I did. Um, I was at Netscope. That was my fourth startup. So um, I've been a function of startups. Uh, but anyhow, so Jeffrey Moore from Crossing the Chasm fame, right? He also has a book called Zone to Win. And there are multiple zones. There are four specifically. There is one which is Transformation Zone. And Transformation Zone is a product or a category. It is on the cusp of making a significant business impact. And so how do you pour resources on that so that it can transform the company? Security is that at Cisco, all the way. At the moment, right? At the moment. That's good to hear. Yeah, from all the way from Chuck Robbins. And if you've heard him talk to Wall Street on, on some of those shows that he goes to, 
he will time and time and time again reiterate that security is the number one priority at Cisco. And I can tell you on the inside, I have access to every possible resource I can ask for. And that is super empowering. This is why we're able to organize around outcomes. This is why we're able to invest in technologies that may be thought of like a little bit on the on the edge. I'll give you a quick example. Yeah, please do. So I, wanted, yeah. I just wanted to throw in, it sounds like yeah. uh, security is the future of Cisco for now. Um, but I, I take I you mean, to the sideline. It's a big part of that differentiation. So. Yeah. Um, we've all heard about ChatGPT and yes. sort of it's everywhere. The beauty of ChatGPT for us on the security side, on the blue hat, if you will, uh, side of the house, has been that I don't need to spend a lot of time to train the model. And so for me, again, going back to that simplification, not simplistic, but simplification of the process, is some of our engineers took, even at Cisco, I mean, they get some time of their own that they can experiment. Yeah. So there's two engineers taking their 20% time, and they came up with this uh, demo that makes it sort of really interesting where you will be able to express, you are able to, not future tense, today. You're able to literally say a policy, David should have access to all the systems of record, right? In, in a corporate setting, it may be Workday and Salesforce and ServiceNow and so on and so forth. Like you literally say that in a text form, oh, wow. English language. It converts it into a JSON of the policy, which can then be pushed to whatever enforcement point you want. This is now. No, I, I heard you say earlier, it's, it's not, you're not selling the future. And that's the amazing part, right, about security. So when we talk about the simplification, the simplification is available now. Now we have access to these things. We are able to productize these things. The goal here is for Cisco security, for nobody to have to uh, go through a lot of rigor and nerd knobs and this and that and the other to get to an outcome. You could literally just say it in English and expect an appropriate 100% confident policy to be available that you can enforce on-prem, in cloud, on an endpoint, wherever it makes sense. That, that's where we're at. Like, I'm not giving you a science fiction section. This is here and now where we are with technology. I'm a young person. Say you're talking to your younger self. I'm 18 or may, maybe I'm older, but I'm, I want to transition into like tech. If I want to work with Cisco products, it's, I hear two things over and over. AI, security, good fields to look at. Good fields to look at. And I would say don't even worry about fancy schmancy things like AI, just code. Just even learn as a network code. engineer. D don't worry about it. Even as a network engineer, I will tell you your best intuition is gonna come from coding. If I were 18 again or 20, people will find that they there is, there is a mode of learning. Because what uh, computer programming does is allows you to experiment at rapid pace at scale. There has never been more data and more compute available to people in their lifetime the only thing left is imagination. Software, writing that software allows you to take that experiment that is cooking in your head, put it in practice, try it out, doesn't work, great, you learned, move on. Coding is a force multiplier. Today it's AI, tomorrow it'll be something else. There was one thing I would say, start with Hello World today. Don't wait until the evening or tomorrow, uh, and then from there, off you go. I love that, it's so important. I, it, coding changed my life. Raj, thanks so much, I really appreciate you sharing. Um, thank you for showing us the future. I'm sorry, we're, we're out of time. I could ask you a whole bunch of other things. There's a big announcements about firewalls yeah. and a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Maybe you could just tell us about the firewalls quickly. New range of firewalls, huge price performance improvement. 3100 is 17 times higher throughput on VPN, IPsec performance, nine times higher performance on SSL. And the reason this is important is you can't manage traffic that you can't uh, see. And so decrypting, and most of the traffic is SSL and IPsec these days, to be able to decrypt them at scale is really, really important. So all this goodness only accrues if I can look at the traffic. This is why really, really important that we have that capability in the firewall. Thank you so much.